I'm Mike Huckman at the BioBuzz Center, where I'm pleased to welcome Darcy Vetter, who is the Chief Agricultural Negotiator at the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative. Ms. Vetter, thanks for being here. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me. All right, so first question, what is the Chief Agriculture Negotiator at the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative? Well, it's a very long title, but essentially what it means is that I advocate for U.S. agricultural interests and am the lead of our trade negotiations with other countries and oversee trade policy and our bilateral relationships with other countries. So most recently, I was leading the negotiations with 12 other countries in the Asia Pacific to complete the Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement. Which is? Which is? a trade agreement with 12 countries in the Asia Pacific, um, many different levels of development. You have advanced markets like Japan and Canada, uh, emerging economies like Vietnam and Malaysia that provides uh, great new opportunities for us to sell agricultural products overseas and to set very high standards for uh, regulatory practices like protection of intellectual property and protection of animal and plant health as well. And the TPP, for short, mm -hmm. is was one of the core focuses of your keynote address here That's in the right. food and ag track at this year's Bio International Convention. Why is that? Why is it important to the biotechnology sector? Well, it's just very important to the U.S. food and agriculture sector overall. Mm -hmm. And so I was leading the food and ag track this morning here at Bio. And you know, ag agricultural exports account for 20% of farmer income here in the United States. And more than 90% of the soybeans we grow, for example, are biotech products. Mm -hmm. And so it's incredibly important that other countries adopt policies based on sound science that accept these products and that we lower tariff and other barriers to our agricultural exports. And that's what TPP does. It reduces or eliminates tariff and non-tariff barriers throughout the region. You also talked about China. Yes. Why? Well, China is our biggest. Besides being big. Besides being big, right. that's right. right. They're a very big trading partner, our biggest in the world right now, a key customer for many of our grains, oil seeds, and other products. But when it comes to biotechnology, we've been a little bit frustrated with the fact that their approval system for biotech products is not as transparent or predictable or as science-based as we would like. Um, I was actually pleased this morning to be able to announce that just this morning or actually evening in Beijing, that uh, we were able to reach an agreement with China through the strategic and economic dialogue to work on making that system more predictable and transparent and science-based. So we're looking forward to seeing some results there. So you're making progress. We are, slowly but surely, yes. Right. Most people, I would imagine, are not aware of this, but you right. come from a family that owns a farm in the Midwest yep. that's been in your family for four generations. You grew up on that farm. I'm just wondering how that upbringing and experience informs the work that you do today? It, it's essential, really, because it reminds me that the decisions we make on a macro level, the rules we negotiate between countries, what it boils down to is reducing the cost and risk of doing business. Mm -hmm. So my family exports. We send our products to a number of different countries. We have a small food processing business. and so, Even as a family farm? Even as a family farm, a yeah, small family business. And um, we have to figure out how you fill out the proper paperwork to export your products, what it means if there's even a small tariff on products when you're competing with domestic goods. And so I try and keep in mind how at a small scale people have to navigate those things to keep them as simple as possible and to try and mitigate the risk involved with sending your product overseas. Darcy, the theme of this year's meeting is simply the word imagine. So I'd like you to, a to ask you to please fill in the blank. Imagine what? Well, I imagine a world where even very small groups of farmers, uh, maybe a hundred producers in Africa who live in a valley and are suddenly facing um, salinated water, could work directly with a tech developer to develop a seed variety that responds to exactly the adversity they're facing and could have it delivered to them in a way that's economical and timely to meet their needs. And when it comes to the life sciences, I also imagine um, a cure for Alzheimer's, <laughs> which affects my mother. So oh, I'm sorry to hear yeah. that. And unfortunately, it touches so, so many, many of us. So many. Yeah, I'm but sorry to hear that. promising. All right. Well, that's <laughs> so. what so many people in this industry are working to crack it, that code. Exactly. Day it's in inspiring day out. to hear All what right. so many people here at Bio are doing. So, Darcy Vetter, thank you so much for joining us here at the Bio Center. Thank you.